Laboratory Technical Update. This quick topic will cover some trends in dentistry that we've noticed from the laboratory perspective. It will cover model-free crowns and also some new surface techniques used in Crown and Bridge. Some trends in dentistry, things we've noticed, things we read, things we stay up on, uh, we'd like to share. Um, and some of them are the cold hard truth. Uh, fixed laboratories are digital today or are going out of business. That's a trend. Uh, in 2001, there were 15,000 laboratories in North America. Today, uh, the numbers vary a little bit, but somewhere between six and 7,000 remain. That is a lot of attrition. That's a lot of consolidation. And frankly, a lot of laboratories that have just uh, closed their doors, uh, partly because of a um, generation of older technicians running laboratories, uh, but also the barriers of entry uh, due to high cost of equipment and software licensing and the inability to step away from the bench and um, take on new uh, products and services and, uh, and go learn about them and hire people to perform them. It's a, it's a tough balancing act uh, running a laboratory and, and evolving with the very rapidly changing times. Uh, removable laboratories are learning digital today or may suffer the same uh, fate as a lot of the laboratories that are closing. Uh, for many years, laboratories like ours, progressive laboratories, have been making uh, partial denture frameworks digitally, uh, maybe tw 10 years now so far, and that has definitely changed into dentures. One of our goals by the end of 2020 is that all dentures are digital. Um, we could almost do it today, uh, but there are a few things still to develop, and of course you need people and infrastructure to make that kind of change. There will still be tooth setups for partials. Uh, there will be repairs. And so it's not a completely uh, dying uh, sector of the dental laboratory industry. But for mid-sized laboratories that have the capabilities, uh, we've proven that digital dentures are superior. Uh, lasers in the office, of course, that's a trend, uh, but also lasers fabricating restorations, starting with a block, hitting them with a laser, and a crown emerges. It's an incredible technology that um, removes a lot of the variables of traditional techniques. Uh, 3D printing, certainly, uh, in the laboratory is booming, and it's also booming in the dental office. Uh, it's, a, it's a quick method of fabricating. It's also a method that uh, also has low variables uh, compared to fabricating things by hand. And um, also with printing, you have the ability to print multiple materials in layers. Uh, that is an evolving market as well, as opposed to just milling something from a block that's monolithic one material, you can print in layers of different types of materials into your final product. It's very impressive. And digital impressions in the office are still a luxury. I kind of mentioned that's not, not really in, uh, in the trends. Um, um, but we, we have a trend of increasing the number of impressions we receive, you know, every week and month. Uh, but it is still a luxury. Uh, other, other techniques certainly work. PVS impressions, uh, work just fine and a laboratory can digitize them. And one of the major trends, I don't really want to go into it too much at all is, uh, DSOs and China lab outsourcing, uh, China lab outsourcing seems to be on a decline, not the incline, fortunately. Um, kind of as a as a domestic United States laboratory, of course, we're kind of biased against outsourcing. Uh, but certainly DSO growth and uh, consolidation of dental offices is a major change in our industry that is having an impact on uh, both laboratories and on the dental office. So just some trends within our own laboratory. We are uh, averaging about 38% of digital impressions uh, received to every day at the laboratory. Uh, that, that increases uh, a couple percentage points every few months. Uh, and part of that is, you know, of course, doctors purchasing more scanners, uh, but also the ability to do more things in the laboratory with digital impressions, uh, more products being available. 
about 40 to 50 percent of our total business uh, dollar wise begins with digital, digital impressions whether we're scanning a pvs scanning models that show up or um you know or downloading scans uh it's about half of the business and about 90 percent of the workflow at our laboratory involves digital uh dentures partials implants uh, we're printing splints uh, so just about everything touches or is touched by digital and then one of the major reasons doctors purchase digital is the savings uh, and it's justified you know somewhere between 10 and 34 percent on crown and bridge uh, will um, cover the cost of most uh, scanners on the market so that's a very very nice trend uh, model free crowns in our laboratory have have boomed uh, this is just going back to 2016 where we struggled with um, with occlusion with designing without models without verification it's a real leap of faith for a laboratory to fabricate something without a model or uh, you know actual articulation uh, but we overcame it a couple years ago uh, with special equipment from three shape and uh, with just endless trial and error and it is a major component of our crown and bridge department now in fact um, throughout the week hundreds of crowns leave our building uh and and for many reasons they are superior to regular crown and bridge from a pvs impression i mean digital impressions are more accurate than pvs um uh, you don't have the variables of pouring up the models trimming the models digiting the the um ditching the dyes the human error uh, it's incredibly accurate. Uh, you know, I, I have this slide here because on the top, it's very important to see the margin. That seems kind of an obvious comment to make, but you have to see the margin. Uh, uh, digital impressions do not see through tissue, saliva, or blood. Must be visual, must see it in your loops, then you scan. If that requires lasering tissue, uh, if it requires um, double retraction cord and pulling one or using Exposil, some other material to displace the tissue, uh, that is highly encouraged uh, because there will be remakes, short margins, um, there will be uh, contact issues, just all kinds of issues without perfect tissue management. So that's very important. And if that's completed, uh, crowns go out the door and are seated um, you know, just about perfectly every time. It's really amazing. Uh, amazing service uh, but you think about it I say amazing service because you know laboratories involved in it but let's face it uh, the CERAC was making crowns uh, 32 years ago and making it without models so it certainly isn't some modern invention it's just uh, an invention that's doing it better um, with with better materials um, and uh, probably a little biased on the on the material and the quality. I think model-free crowns are better than Cerac crowns. Uh, there's more options, and <clears throat> certainly uh, from a financial standpoint, uh, outsourcing to the laboratory for model-free crowns, I I, I I I believe I think it's proven that it's um, certainly more uh, financially. If you look on a, look on a, look on a spreadsheet of the overall cost of in-office crown milling. Uh, versus laboratory milling. I, I, I think there's evidence that shows that laboratory milling is more cost effective. Uh, but that aside, uh, it's certainly available. And as mentioned before, we'll pay for your scanner uh, in the savings of single crown model free restorations and multiple crown. We, we make one, two, three, four unit uh, single uh, restorations, uh, even bridges, even screw retained and cement retained crowns on implants uh, model free these days because the technology makes it so accurate certainly a, a major trend in our laboratory and some laboratories around the country is uh, the use of, of a polishing technique instead of a glazing technique uh, you'll find uh, Rella Christensen and, uh, and, and other studies out there on the market uh, she has shown and other studies have shown that polished is certainly kinder to the opposing than glazed. Uh, it's more hygienic, it's smoother, it feels better, it's easier to um, it's easier to fabricate, it's easier to polish chair side than it is to reglaze. There's just many, many benefits. Uh, but, the, but the low wear 
against the opposing may be the number one reason to do it. To order it, uh, you know, to order it polished. This is our this product on the screen is our TLZ, which we've offered for about 10 years. Um, the zirconias have evolved, and so has our material that we fabricate from. Um, TLZ is, in fact, probably a seventh generation zirconia within our laboratory, and I think it's probably about the best we've ever made uh, right now. Uh, there are new techniques for making zirconia aesthetic. One of them is this Mio product, which is a surface stain. And actually, surface stain is not really the, the right way to give it its credit. It's a liquid translucent ceramic. And so a crown is milled full contour so that you know that the contacts, the occlusion, the design is exactly as it was designed in the computer, which is, um, which is significant because uh, really computers manage uh, uh, design and contacts and overall uh, crown design and fit better than uh, build-up, we think. This is a liquid translucent ceramic and it just makes crowns beautiful very smooth on the surface. In fact, it's uh, we, we did some research on um, on this technique now, but it's very similar to uh, polishing the crown uh, for a for a smooth surface with kind kindness to the opposing dentition. Uh, Mio is also used in full arch. Uh, this uh, the teeth use this um, liquid translucent ceramic. Uh, the pink is a light cured composite, uh, which is which is beautiful and strong, and it's uh, more of a light cure than a than than the traditional heat and firing of layered ceramics, which can you know cause all kinds of issues with uh, with zirconia with monolithic zirconia. Um, so this is a very predictable, um, sir, uh, very predictable system for producing full arch cases and, you know, in single crowns uh, because you don't have the multiple high firings over a number of days. It's a more stable product uh, with these new surface stains and composites. Just another case, another nice full arch uh, Mio um, layered ceramic. We'll call it a ceramic, but it's very, very thin, does not really add much um, uh, surface to it at all, surface um, depth.